knows Hershey is 100% volunteer. There's nobody sitting in a fire station right now waiting for your call. So if there is a call, whether it's a big one or a small one, you need to call us as soon as possible with the magic number, right, 911. And uh, that gets everybody rolling so that uh, we leave work at home. Uh, my full-time job, I'm a house parent at the Milton Hershey School. So I have uh, 12 high school boys that I take care of. My daughter just turned 19 and my son is 17. So uh, I take care of teenagers all day long, and then for fun, I go to the firehouse where I have 70 teenagers, I mean firefighters, uh, that I take care of uh, getting all this stuff done. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about fire safety. So we're going to talk about the pass method and using the fire extinguisher because that's going to be one of the things that uh, we're going to practice with today. We're going to cause causes of fire, fire prevention, how to choose a fire extinguisher, fight a fire extinguisher, and using the fire extinguisher. So what do you think is the number one cause of fires that happen in the home? The kitchen. Interact interactive. In the kitchen, right? So. We go to unattended cooking fires all the time. In fact, 50% of all fires that happen is because somebody started something on the stove, and then because it's going to take a whole 20 minutes to watch that thing boil, you guys have ADD and you're off doing other things. You're doing the laundry, you're talking on the phone, playing Pokemon, whatever it is that you're doing. You're not paying attention to the food on the stove. Um, so we go that we do that quite a bit. Um, here in Hershey, we have a problem with candles, the Yankee stinky candles. Um, <laughs> you light them, and they burn for hours. The, actually, if you turned over the candle before you lit it, it's, it actually has an instruction that says don't burn it for more than two hours, because that glass gets so hot, the glass shatters and the candle falls out. Uh, we've lost several homes here in Hershey because of candles. Smoking is the number one cause of people dying from fire. So uh, people are smoking in bed, they don't get up, or they drop a cigarette in, in their couch. Uh, we had a resident in Conewago Township who dropped a cigarette uh, in his bed. The, the, the resulting fire, because he didn't wake up because the smoke, he inhaled the smoke, um, was so hot that the bed literally melted through the first floor and the bed was in the basement. All right? So uh, we need to be real careful about smoking materials. Here in a building like this, Obviously, there's no smoking facility, but people are smoking out in the parking lot. They, they come up to your building, and they immediately flick the, mul the, the cigarette into the mulch. And so you're in here having your meeting, and there's a mulch fire outside. So uh, have, a, have a place for smoking materials to be put, uh, you know, put out so that we don't have that problem. Space heaters. Not a problem today when it's 120 degrees outside, but, uh, you know, winter's coming soon. And uh, you know, as folks, the economy's not so, so great, so we're not heating the entire house. So we close off parts of the house, turn that, that heating system down, and we put these little hot boxes throughout the house to keep you warm in that one little room that you are. Um, and then over time, they get in the way, so you kick them back, and you kick them back until they're up against the wall. They need a three-foot space to have proper ventilation, and they don't heat up your wall, or uh, grandma's walking by with her Snuggie and catches on fire. This kind of sucks, but arson is a huge cause of fire. Somebody uh, is disgruntled for some reason. Uh, I've had a, uh, a boyfriend come and throw gasoline onto a secretary's desk. Um, you know, some intentional fire setting uh, is, a, is a big deal. It, ins for insurance reasons, is another, is another big deal. Uh, so just pay attention to what's going on. The people that uh, are no longer happy with, uh, with their situation, uh, reporting those things to the police and, and uh, getting ahead of that stuff, keeping, keeping an eye on what's going on. So when you have to, we, you guys have these uh, electrical cords over here, when you have to plug an extension cord into an extension cord into an extension cord, like at Christmas time, um, that's a problem, because there's only so much electricity that runs through there. If you touch it and it's hot, like uh, you plug your, your cell phone in at night and you tuck it under your pillow and you wake up and that phone is really super hot or your pillow is super hot, that's a, that's a clue that something is going to catch on fire. So we need to be very careful of that. Uh, put your phone on top of the bed where it's got some ventilation and it is not going to overheat. 
for housekeeping. So one of the things, that, especially in an, in an assembly building where we've got lots of people coming and going, we're open to the public, we need to have all the corridors open. So, you know, emergency exits are extremely important. And if we put things, baby carriages and filing cabinets and things up in front of the exit doors, then people can't get out. There have been several uh, club fires uh, where the bouncer locks up the door to make sure that people don't sneak in behind him. And then if there's an emergency, people, you know, he has no idea what's going on up in the stage. People are rushing him. He's trying to stop everybody. And there's a huge fire and they can't get out because he's blocked the doors. Um, so just pay attention to what you're doing. Um, when I go to the movie theater, the first thing that I do is I look around to all the emergency exits. Most of the exits for a movie theater, you're coming in from the back, so you don't interrupt the, the people who are watching the movie. But most movie theaters actually have an, an ex exit down by the screen. So just pay attention to your surroundings. Uh, if you're in a restaurant, um, you don't have to go out the front door. There's always a door in the back where they, they brought deliveries for the kitchen. So if there's an emergency, there's always another way out. Uh, in the nightclub fire in Rhode Island, the people who went out the kitchen actually survived, and the people who were trying to come out the front door, over 100 of them uh, died in the fire. So just be aware of your surroundings and what you do. Um, things like uh, flammable liquids. So you've got a, a lawnmower. You're keeping gasoline around. Uh, you've got paint cans and thinners and, and all kinds of things. You're trying to do home improvements. You're building new buildings. Um, having stuff laying around uh, where they get uh, exposed, so the spark happens or, or they, they heat up from the, the sun from the windows and uh, can cause a fire. So just put that, those things away appropriately where they're supposed to be um, so that we don't knock them over and, and start something really bad from happening. So one of the most important things that we can do is know that there's a fire. And uh, we've got these pretty smoke detectors that are up on the ceilings everywhere and those should be checked monthly that they actually work and if necessary the batteries are replaced. So a lot of them here in a commercial building are, are wired into the electricity of the building so you don't really have to worry about that. But at home you've got the, the little 9 volt battery or, or AAA batteries that, that go bad over time. Uh, it, so we're going to replace those batteries at least once a year if not twice a year just to make sure that that smoke detector works. Also, the new modern smoke detectors, if the smoke detector in the basement goes off, it can actually activate the other ones in the house, just like the commercial system, so that you would know that there is, a, is an issue. Uh, dealing with folks that, that have uh, disabilities, um, they've got smoke detectors with strobe lights, they've got smoke detectors with bed shakers, and so you can get different options depending on, on the needs of, of the folks that are out there. Uh, sprinkler system. So a, a sprinkler is a uh, basically a water hose that we've put throughout the building and only where the heat gets to 155 degrees will that little uh, colored bulb break out and start spraying water. So if you're going to be Bruce Willis, you're trapped in a building with terrorists and you light your cigarette lighter to make the terrorists wet, you're the only one getting wet because only where it gets hot is, the, is, that, smoke, is that sprinkler going to go off. So uh, don't do that. Uh, you guys have uh, building procedures. You have procedures if you're out and about with your clients. What are you supposed to do? Taking care of your clients are ab absolutely your, your first priority. The building can be replaced. It's the, the people's safety that we uh, put our priorities on. You practice your uh, monthly fire drills. I saw evidence of that. Uh, practice good housekeeping to just remind people to, to clean up and keep things taken care of. And the smoking policy. You guys are probably pretty good at that. Don't have as much of a problem as we used to. So working with uh, folks uh, in the hospital or the disabled population, we're going to use the race method. So the first one is to rescue the people who are closest. People panic or people are unable to rescue themselves. Right? So we're going to get those folks. So unfortunately going towards the fire is going to be, in, in your situation, the number one priority. But there's going to be a time where you have to make that decision is I can't go there. So uh, you know, just be aware of that. Alert others, yell fire, scream, call 911, whatever you can do to activate that system and get things going. Uh, here in the building, there's a little red box that's by the front door that says fire department, pull here. Pull that box straight down and that will activate the fire alarm system alerting everybody in the building that there is an emergency. And just because you practice all the time, you all walk outside and then you go, oh my gosh, there's a real fire. Um, 
confine the fire by closing the doors. So the, all the doors in this building are all fire rated. So we're going to close those doors. It will take at least half an hour to 45 minutes for a raging fire to burn through to the next one. That's plenty of time for you to get out. It also isolates the smoke and keeps that smoke in one particular area so we don't spread smoke throughout the entire building. And if you're willing and able, and we'll talk about this in a minute, we can use our fire extinguisher and put out a small fire. So race, rescue, alert, confine, and extinguish. So if we are going to choose to fight a fire, you got to think about some things. Is everybody out of the building? I don't want you to leave a client um, to go fight a fire when your priority is to take care of them. The fire department's been called. Remember, we're all volunteer. There's nobody sitting in the fire station waiting for your call. It takes us a few minutes. Now, with that, I can be anywhere in Derry Township within 10 minutes of your call uh, with at least 10 firefighters. So it does. It, 10 minutes, though, is an eternity when your building's on fire. If the fire's small and confined to the area where it started. So when we talk about small, I'm usually talking about a kitchen trash can. So roughly, you know, about this high. You know, so if the fire's bigger than that, your, your fire extinguisher may not have enough stuff in it to put that fire out, or the fire is spreading too fast for you to put that out. In those cases, just leave the area and, uh, and let us take care of that. Um, we do not want you to crawl into ceiling spaces, into closets, into basements, and those kind of things to fight fires. If, if you're in an isolated area, the door closes behind you, that's probably not a good choice to be fighting that fire. Um, the fire extinguisher is good, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, and you're trained and confident. If after this class you're like, mm -mm, not going to do it for fire, I totally understand. Uh, it is the normal instinct is to run away from fire. Um, so go ahead and do that. <laughs> yep. Close the door on your way out and, and let us do, take care of that. Okay. So when we talk about fires, we generally talk about uh, different kinds of fuels that burn. So the most common is the wood, paper, and trash. Um, the, we call them ordinary combustibles, the class A things. Things that if you put water on it, the fire goes out. There's other things that if you put water on, they don't go out. They get, they get worse, in fact. So uh, for, for you guys, you're going to be using the all-purpose fire extinguisher in most cases. In most communities, we've replaced these. Um, around so that you, you don't need to, to make these choices, but they do happen. Flammable liquids, gas, oils, paint. If you squirt water on a bacon grease fire in your kitchen, it spreads and makes the fire bigger. All right? It does not put the fire out. So you want to be very careful about that. In fact, if we're talking about kitchen fires, um, we don't want you to pick the pan up and try to run over to the kitchen stove with a burning pan of, of bacon grease. All that's going to do is slop all over your hands, burning you, or it's going to spread all over the kitchen cabinets, and now you've made a little pan fire into a huge kitchen fire. So just leave that, up, leave that uh, pan on the stove, turn the stove off. Uh, if you have it, you can put a cover over the top of it. You know, Grandma used to have all these pot lids hanging on her kitchen uh, walls. They were there because they were fire extinguishers. She didn't have all this fancy technology to put in her house, so she used a pot lid to cover it up and then put the fire out. Electrical equipment. So if your MacBook catches on fire, all right, the first thing that we're going to need to do is turn off the electricity. So whether that's pulling the cord out of the wall or finding the circuit breaker and killing the electricity, that nine times out of ten will put that fire out. If it doesn't, the, the energized electrical equipment is now an ordinary uh, burning thing, and then we can use our fire extinguisher to put that out. And then this is very uncommon, magnesium fires, uh, but if you own a Volkswagen and your engine catches on fire, if we squirt water on it, not only will it burn brighter, but it will actually melt through the pavement. It's pretty impressive. Uh, not that I have any experience with that. So we need to know that the, uh, so the Let's talk about the fire extinguisher. So how do we know that the fire extinguisher is good? You look at it and look, the, is the hose uh, rotted and, and not going to work right? There's a little gauge here on the front, and that little gauge should be in the green. If it's not in the green, you've either got too much air in here, and as soon as you squirt the fire extinguisher, you're going to squirt air on the fire and make that fire bigger. Or 
there's not enough air in here, you're going to pull the handle and nothing's going to happen. So that needle needs to be in the green. If it's not, you need to let somebody from the building maintenance or, or somebody to go and have this uh, replaced uh, or checked by a fire extinguisher company. Okay? Uh, there's generally not, a, not an ex expiration date on them. They come and just look at them and just make sure that they're, they're up to date. They do test these about every five years. They put pressure in them just to make sure that they're not going to uh, uh, have something bad happen to them. Okay. All right, so then we're going to use the pass method. We're going to pull the pin. So right here at the top, there's a little hand grenade pin. It's usually held on by a little piece of plastic. Just rip that plastic off and pull the pin out. All right. That just keeps the, the folks that shouldn't be touching the fire extinguisher from squirting powder all over your building or all over your car. Okay? We're then going to uh, aim the hose. And when we aim the hose, we're going to aim at the bottom of the fire. Don't aim to the tips. If you aim at the tips of the candle, you've missed because that powder is going to fly over the top of it and hit the other side. So aim in front of it, and then we can walk our, our powder right inside. We're going to pull, uh, squeeze the handle. So we're just going to pull down on the handle. The bottom handle doesn't move. It's the top handle that moves. Just, just squeeze that. Um, you'll get some chance to practice with that. And then you're going to sweep the hose from side to side, making sure that you get all the fire out. Don't just squirt the stuff in the middle and make two fires on the outside, because then things get worse. All right. With that, we're going to uh, practice a little fire seat, a little fire extinguisher stuff. Okay. Right. So the way that this works is my little video game. I can adjust the, uh, the type of fire, ABC, and then the difficulty level from one to a rookie to four is a fire chief, right? And you just tell me what, what you want to fight and we'll, uh, we'll make this happen, right? Uh, so who wants to be first? There's no points for this. Come on. I'll do it. Yeah, come on up. Let's do it. All righty. So here we go. Your fire has started. Oh my gosh. Pull the pin. Aim the hose. Squeeze the handle. Right down the bottom of the screen. There you go. Sweep it from side to side. You did it. Yay. Awesome. That's great. Thanks. Next. Oh, well, so oh, come on, jump up here so we can get to work. Go for it, Caitlin. <laughs> you got this. It's a All right. hard act to follow, I know, but... <laughs> okay, so this is a flammable liquid fire, and so one of the things that happens, you'll put your powder on, you'll go to squirt some other stuff, and then it'll reignite. So you just gotta keep making that sweep from side to side. So then, can you get, can you get fast enough? Uh oh, we ran out of stuff. So now you would either need a new fire extinguisher or to retreat. And I didn't do that to, to mess with you, okay? We did. Uh, we, I, I teach that uh, the Milton Hershey School had a Christmas tree fire, and they used 26 fire extinguishers before it actually worked. All right. The problem with a Christmas tree is a three-dimensional thing. So as you're squirting powder on it, the powder is falling down to the floor. So it was very difficult. There was also an electrical fire, and they didn't turn the electricity off. Right? Oh, so it was kind of it was kind of a whole thing. But by the time that we got there, the only thing we could see was the maintenance guys running around. We could see their ankles in the middle of Founders Hall, and so we kind of got them to come out. So, and that was a million dollars worth of cancer. So that was quite a bit of stuff. When was that? That was a long time ago, but yeah, probably six years ago, seven years ago. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so who's next? All right, I promise we're not going to mess with you. Anyway, but who's up? We got to get everybody through this, all right? I say, you might as well just start making. Just on. jump on up. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
Is it better to go fast or slow? No, you want to go kind of slow, you kind of methodical um, to go from side to side, but you got to go fast enough that you're putting it on that fire. I've never used these. So they come in different sizes. This is a, uh, a 15 pound fire extinguisher. If you need to, go ahead and put it on the floor or put it on the table. Um, the little tiny ones, the ones you get for your kitchen, all right, this one has about 30 seconds worth of stuff that comes out of it. The little tiny ones that you get for your kitchen have about five seconds. So you really have to be good or you have to be very close. Um, you know, so the big 15 pounder, they're about $50. It's probably a better choice. Okay, who's up? Yeah. We have a question. Yeah, have yeah a question. go right ahead. Do they explode in vans? Uh, they do, because somebody pulled the pin out of it. Okay. Right? <laughs> I just needed to know. <laughs> somebody pulled the pin out of it. Yeah, yeah somebody got the pin out, or it fell out. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Is that one of the lights? I need one of the lights. Oh, we have an expert. <laughs> yep, that is. The, yeah, yeah. That, yep, that's the that's the potassium out of the fire extinguisher. All right, that's what goes. That's the stuff that sprays all over. Your van's probably really yeah, fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's clean now. It was yeah. clean. Yeah, that's why I said it was. Yeah, it was. Cool. All right, who's up? Thank you. So. It's not toxic or anything, so. Yeah. It, it's just a fun time, you know. Absolutely. Pop. Oh, yeah. When did that happen? Like, if the pin wasn't pulled out of it, would it have exploded? Oh. No. no. Somebody, somebody tapped the handle, or the handle got tapped while you were driving down the road. Yeah. Oh. So it wasn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a green thing, right there on the bottom. Excellent. Oh, I got that quick. Awesome. Oh man. Yeah. Next. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, don't push the handle while you're pulling the pin out. There you go. Watching the fire, even though she thought she had it out, she wasn't really sure. That's exactly the way to do it. If you if you're if ever in doubt, just keep squirting. And just, it just wants the hose back in place. Oh, that's right. Any more? Got it. Okay. 
Any more? Any more? Last person? Do you want to jump and use the fire extinguisher real quick? <laughs> She's like, me? Nah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. That's your fire safety. Does anybody have any questions about fire safety disaster stuff? Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.